they're on that end of the spectrum. They're not on the front end saying, oh, you know, let me do this and let me do that. They're begging for a job and cry grown men crying by the time they get to me. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Breaking Truckers. You have failed me for the last time, Admiral. Didn't know I could choke you through the TV, did you? But I can. Morning. How are you today, Miss Lady? Good morning. I'm well. How are you? I am doing all right. So I would like to get you on the okay. record because I got a I, I, I got an email concerning our uh -huh. uh, the video, and I wanted to get your opinion. Okay. All okay. right. Let's do it. No more wasting time. Let's get it. Hold on. All right, Miss Jerry from Life on the Road Recruiting back in the building. How are you today? I am well. Thank you. Well, Miss Jerry from Texas, uh, let everybody know a little bit about you and what and, and what you do before we get into our question. Sure, sure. So the core, um, my company's Life on the Road Recruiting and Transportation Services. Um, at the core of our company, we are a uh, truck driver recruitment agency. We're third party and we recruit for trucking companies across the U.S. Um, in, in 2020, when the FMCSA Drug and Alcohol Clearinghouse was implemented, uh, we got our first phone call from a driver that was looking for work after he had completed the SAP program. Um, and so we took it upon ourselves to learn all about that process um, that, a, that a driver after a failed drug or alcohol or refusal has to do before getting back into the truck and performing safety sensitive functions. So we took it upon ourselves to become the expert on that process. And since then, um, that was January, February of 2020. And um, since then, we've been helping those drivers get back in the truck. We've been educating trucking companies. We are also a full service um, third party drug testing company. So we're able to um, drug test drivers and, and things like that. And um, so we're like deep in the trenches in this whole, you know, trucking industry, drug testing, clearing house, SAP program, return to duty process, anything that you need to know about it. Um, we pride ourselves on being the expert in helping and educating. That's what's up. That's what's up. So if you guys know who to go to in order to get it right, man. So Miss Jerry, you, you, you came back again with another uh, TikTok video explaining that it was uh, explaining the numbers of drivers that mm -hmm. that are in the clearinghouse and it's mind blowing. Like, wow, mm -hmm. I, I did not realize it was mm -hmm. it was that many drivers that 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 was in the clearinghouse. Now, when yeah. and well, not not when because you already says. It's a reality now, but when it when it becomes further reality, when the FMCSA includes hair follicles in the, in 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 the clearinghouse, is that going to affect more drivers, including the drivers that's already on the road? Say, for example, when they do randoms and stuff like that. So, um, I do not know, let me preface by saying, I do not know when that will become, uh, when, when it will come to fruition. However, the Trucking Alliance and all the mega carriers are pushing for this. Um, and their petition just kind of further solidifies their want to have this done. Um, and so what they're saying is there are drivers that currently come to their companies and fail hair drug testing. And hair drug test is right now at this time is a company policy. It's not a DOT. The DOT doesn't require, they only require urine. It is a company policy, but the majority of your mega carriers 
do require it for whatever reason, whether it's lower insurance premiums, whatever the case may be, they do require it. And so they have drivers and the numbers don't lie. There's thousands of drivers that they're citing have come to their company and they want it to be what they're saying. This is exactly what they're saying. They want it to be considered an actual knowledge violation. And mm. so what that means is, so there's three ways that you can get a violation in the clearinghouse today. Mm -hmm. The first is a drug test positive. We all know that. The second is a refusal. Mm -hmm. Now, if you go to our YouTube channel and listen, there's about a dozen ways that you can get a refusal in the clearinghouse. Yep. We, most drivers, only know about two or three. OK, mm -hmm. but there's over a dozen ways that you can get popped with a refusal. And so we get it every day from a driver that's like, I didn't even know that this was possible. So the refusal mm -hmm. is the second way. The third way is what they call actual knowledge. Right. Mm -hmm. Actual knowledge means that um, you got stopped at a DOT inspection and we smelled marijuana. Uh, right. We had the probable cause to go and do a little bit more searching and we found it. It's not that we smelled it, that we had reasonable suspicion. Um, it's that we found it. It's not that you came to work and your eyes were blush I red and I smelled weed on you. No, it's that that's reasonable suspicion. That gives me the, the ability to send you to take a drug test, reasonable mm -hmm. suspicion. Mm -hmm. But the actual knowledge is that I actually, for a fact, know or see with direct observation or you've admitted to me. I've had drivers that have had actual knowledge violations because the company said they admitted it mm -hmm. on some paperwork or whatever. Mm -hmm. If you admit or confess, it's called actual knowledge. Mm -hmm. And so these companies are wanting to use actual knowledge as basis for giving a driver a violation in the clearinghouse according to failing the hair drug test. Man, that's that that is so much to unpack. I mean, that's <laughs> it is. It is. It's taking you to church right there. I mean, but I'm telling you, I, I you gotta you gotta stay up real late at night to to not know some of these rules and, and regulations um, that I know in this industry. But it's just from doing research and helping so many drivers on the front end, in the middle, and on the back end of this clearinghouse uh, situation. Man, Miss Jerry, uh, so I got a, I got an email, and uh, mm -hmm. the young man was saying, uh, you know, a young man was was kind of, you know, debating me on on mm -hmm. what was said in your video, you know, and he said that, and I quote. What drivers do on their off time or their 34 or their 10 hour is their business. They should not be, uh, they, they should not be subjected to any of the situations for the FMCSA, uh, you know, drug and hair, I mean, drug and uh, hair follicle thing. What they do on their, what they do on their 34 is their business. I said, you know what, I, I was, I, you know, I, I didn't answer it because I knew I was going to give you a call so I can get your opinion on on that. Right. But right. I, I'm I'm sure you get the same drivers or people that come in and say just about the same thing as 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 this uh, email said. What do you say I to mean, that? Honestly. I don't get that because by the time they get to, other than, you know, the comments and stuff on YouTube and TikTok and stuff like that, the, by the time they get to me, they're begging for work. They're on that end of the spectrum. They're not on the front end saying, oh, you know, let me do this and let me do that. They're begging for a job and cry, grown men crying by the time they get to me. So um, to, to here's what I would say to that. So to the driver that says what we do on our off time is, is, is none of your business, I agree 110% if you work at the manufacturing plant, mm. if you're not a truck driver. Because here's, the, here's my, 
Here's my thought process behind that. Um, no, I was just saying, you know, you have to, you're, you're held to a higher standard as a truck driver. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to give you some, what I'm seeing in this industry. Cause see, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting on the outside mm -hmm. looking in. I'm in the industry, um, industry circles. I'm reading the industry news. Um, I'm there. And what I'm seeing is I'm, th I'm seeing three classes of drivers, right? Mm -hmm. I'm seeing the professional truck driver. If you look in any, any article, any, anything that has to do with trucking, talking about a driver, they use the word professional, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then the second class is the truck driver. Okay. And that, that who I put in that class is the drivers that's complaining. I put those, the drivers that's complaining, the drivers with a lot of tickets, a lot of accidents, felons make the insurance goes up. That's the truck driver. Mm. You can't choose who you can't go and work for the best of the best of the best mm. because you're just a truck driver. They want a professional truck driver. Now, five years ago, it might have been different, but this is 2022, and there's three classes. The third and final class is the drug driver, the sap driver, and they're in a class, and that's the lowest class of trucking, and I see it every day because as soon as I get that label, they're immediately labeled a crackhead, immediately. It didn't matter if it was a refusal and you couldn't get there in, in time because you were sitting in traffic and it was a wreck and you couldn't get to the drug testing lab. It doesn't matter. You are labeled a crackhead, mm -hmm. and no one wants to hire. I'm begging companies every day to take these drivers. Mm -hmm. Every day. And it's, 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 it's crazy that it's a lot of drivers. And we're not just talking about weed. We're not just talking about that. But we're, we're talking about, right. no, we're, no, we're talking no, no, about no. heavy, like other heavy drugs as well that, that drivers partake right. in. It's just that <laughs> weed is the, is, is the theme of, of what everything, you know, of, of everything. But we we talking about exactly. cocaine, exactly. opiates, exactly. meth. We we talking exactly. about a, a, a lot of other hardcore drugs that 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 drivers Absolutely. do that drivers Absolutely. do on the road, whether they're on the clock mm -hmm. or off the clock. Now this guy exactly this guy you know I I caught in the comment session. This guy said it's not that drugs it's it's not the drugs that cause the problem. He says it's alcohol, mm -hmm. period. What, what do you got to say about that? I mean, they're in the same boat. I've had many drivers go through SAP because of alcohol, and they get a mouth swab. Um, I had one driver who had a, had a birthday party he had went to the day before. By the time he came into work, it must not have been out of his system, had a mouth swab, and had to go through the SAP program. So those drivers get popped just as much. But here's the thing about the marijuana. The marijuana is the one that stays in the system the longest. The rest of them that you just named, the the meth, the coke, the white white lightning, all of those things, those leave your system in a shorter time period. So the ones that do smoke weed every day um should take um should be um should be happy because they about to get they about to catch the rest of them. That's mm. not getting caught because the white lightnings don't get caught as much. Marijuana makes up eighty two percent of the drug test failures, mm. and I can tell you the demographic of of marijuana. The marijuana demographics are black and brown people. Mm. That's the majority, not all, but that is the majority. Now they already say they before we get on up out of here, and I do appreciate you coming on and chopping it up with me this Sunday morning. Um, they say that a lot, you know, some of these commenters say that the reason why the the trucking alliance is doing the push is to push black people, black truckers, out of the industry from becoming owner operators and from becoming successful and all like that they doing that because of that what's your opinion on that you know i don't think so 
I, I don't agree with that at all. Um, I think, and, and this is what I tell drivers on the, out of, on the other side of the SAP program, get your own truck. I mean, maybe not now because this isn't the right in the right time, or maybe it is, but um, get in a place in a position where you can, because you still have to be managed, of course, by the BOT. I have some drivers that I had to kind of go back and forth with about that. They don't feel like once you're an owner operator, you don't have to be managed, um, but you still do. However, you, you'll never fire yourself. You'll never tell yourself that you can't um, work for, for your company. So put, put the power in your hands. Even though you, you've made this mistake, um, I, I feel like you still will be able to do very well in trucking. But it's not a matter of pushing black people out of trucking. I don't think that has anything to do with it. Um, I think it's a matter of keeping the roadway safe, whether it's alcohol, whether it's marijuana, whether it's white lightning, whether it's meth. Um, the, the goal is to keep the roadway safe. My granny is riding on those roads. Your, your people are riding on those roads. Everyone is. And so that is the Bass. goal. Um, I think it's just a matter of being knowledgeable in the system and knowing how to not get yourself caught up in their system because it is it is the new prison system. Mm. The SAP program is the new prison system because look at it look at it this way. You get you're you're caught, okay? Mm. The second thing is that you have to go through some counseling mm -hmm. and you have to the then the third thing is you have to go beg somebody to work for. Okay. Mm -hmm. You have to go beg somebody. You nobody's just key, taking you. Key word you is have to beg. beg companies. Key word is exactly. Beg. That's the key word. Mm -hmm. You have to beg these companies to work for you and sponsor you. Mm -hmm. Because that company is your sponsor uh, from now until you have to finish those follow-up treatment tests. Mm -hmm. And not only, just like on probation, you got to go in every month to your PO and pee in a cup and um, do all the things in front of them. You have to pull your pants down. You have to turn around, pull your shirt up, mm -hmm. all of those things. Every time they tell you to go, you better go or you won't be a truck driver. Crazy. And so this is the new prison system. So put yourself in wow. this if you want to and join the other 150,000 drivers that I've been out here talking to and helping and teaching and educating through this. You don't want that. Wow. There it is. There it is. Miss Jerry, Life on the Road Recruiting. I, I keep telling you guys, y'all, see, a lot of you guys – is over here listening to all these other people that really don't know exactly y'all 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 listening to these people that's over here is talking out the side of their neck this young lady is in the grind she knows what she's talking about guys seriously go and follow this young lady she's on youtube facebook tiktok she's on all of the social media platforms if you're in any situations concerning the fmcsa clearinghouse this lady right here will be the first person that you need to talk to. You need to talk to her and stop listening to all of the all of the BS that other people is talking about. You need to talk to somebody that's in the know. Miss Jerry, again, Life on the Road Recruiting, Facebook, YouTube, Life on the Road Recruiting.com. All of the social media outlets, if you need any, if you need any advice or need somebody to help out, I mean help you out in any type of situation when it comes to trucking, get with this young lady right here. Thank you very much, man, for coming on and chopping it up with me. Until next time, man. Next time. We Thank you. Ooh, My I, think pleasure. We, I think we started something, man. So Yes, we'll be doing it again soon, I'm sure. Yes, I'm we sure. will. Yes, we will. Because like I said, every time I get a every time I get a comment, email, or any anything that I that I think may mm -hmm. need your expertise, you're gonna be that first person I call. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Take care, little lady. All right, you too. Bye bye. There's something in the air tonight Got a feeling coming over me I swear that this is that place to be In the water, in the, the water, yeah.
in the water 